Anthony William, the medical medium, told you I'd be here, Facebook Live. Children's health, really important, gonna cover it. Reading straight out of Liver Rescue right here, you guys. So I'm happy to be here, everybody getting their books. Um, talk about children's health, acid reflux, pandas, jaundice, talking about that, bloating, constipation, talking about stomach pain, intestinal spasms, right? Children that have that, babies that have that. Yes, difficulty sleeping. Why isn't my baby sleeping good? Because intestinal problems are occurring that nobody knows about, ear infections, fevers, strep throat, talking about that, eczema, psoriasis, all of this that babies and children have, and guess what? It leads to adulthood. Do you have that going on right now? Did you have it as a baby? Did you have it as a child? Did you have it as a teenager? Was it starting up? Is it starting up now? What's going on? So all of this is important, so I wanna cover right into it. This is about children's health. This is about answers to children's health. Baby liver, reading directly out of the book, it's something I call baby liver. That, that phrase isn't out there. It's not out there, but it's in liver rescue because baby liver means there's problems going on when a baby comes here. So here's, let's go into it right away. When we come into this world, we believe that you got your book one minute ago. Okay, that's incredible. <laughs> that's, I had to stop for a second for that one. You know, it's incredible. You know, when we come through this world, we come to this world, we believe that as a baby, we got this fresh start, and we do, of course, we do, in so many ways, of course we do. But there's something that isn't fresh that comes along every time we're born, and that's our liver. Our liver doesn't come here fresh. It doesn't come here brand new. Now, yes, it comes here brand new in many ways, but it comes here also with a history, with an old history that comes along with it. Toxic heavy metals, mercury, aluminum, lead, arsenic, copper, come along into the liver in trace amounts. Pesticides, herbicides, DDT, fungicides. DDT is in every single baby and child's liver as a baby, a brand new baby comes into the world, okay? And it's not just that. Chemicals, chemical fertilizers, preservatives, foods that people have eaten down the line, um, pesticides were sprayed on your grandparents' lawn decades and decades ago before you were even born. It goes all the way back. We don't come into this world clean, liver-wise. We just don't. It doesn't work like that. So, so this is really important. So a lot of babies, they have more history from generations. It's not the mom's fault. <clears throat> it's not the dad's fault. But it comes from generations of industrial use, industrial chemicals, industrial exposure, um, <clears throat> different kinds of exposure, just pesticides alone. So what happens is then when we come into this world like that, our livers need some time to reboot. They get a hard start for so many babies and children. And we could have a sluggish, stagnant liver as a child going along the way, and that makes it really difficult for, um, for children. You could have the bloating, you could have the acid reflux, you could have the digestive problems, all the symptoms I just said, and then so many more things too you can have too. If you love my pandas information, oh my God, you're reading it. You're reading it. Mind-blowing, I can't believe you're reading it. Blows my mind actually. You know. Someone said to me the other day, like, you, you know everybody's reading the book. I'm like, no, I don't. I, I don't. To think that you're actually reading it and you love the Panis information blows me away. And I just can't tell you how much it, it just it makes me feel so good that you're doing that. I'm so proud of you. So we'll keep on going into this. We're going to do this. So the bottom line is, just like acid reflux, when a baby has acid reflux, there's really not good answers. You don't get great answers at the doctor's office, pediatrician's office. It's, it's uh, mother's milk is usually the blame if the acid reflux, reflux doesn't um, subside. So mom gets the blame. Have you heard of that before? Where mom has to stop breastfeeding or change up the formula or try different things because they're scared that, wait a minute, is it mom's breast milk? What's going wrong? And it's, it's sad that that happens because it's not the mom to blame. Instead of the liver being an issue or seen as a problem, and the only time pediatricians and doctors see a baby's liver as an issue at all, if there's jaundice, if there's yellowing, right? You guys, I'm sure you've seen that before. There's a lot of grandparents out there. There's a lot of mommies out there. There's a lot of new mommies out there um, that you know that have seen this in their babies or friends' babies or a neighbor's baby and hear about it, the jaundice and, and how that works. But what happens with the jaundice is that you, celiac, I saw your son has celiac at seven. Celiac is also something to do with uh, strep bacteria. <clears throat> has something to do with the liver too. So it's really important to understand how that works. And it's not the body attacking itself, by the way. So with the jaundice, it's the liver struggling is what it is. And 
anything else that's like acid reflux, eczema, psoriasis, bloating, constipation, all these other things I'm talking about, ear infections, UTIs, is not connected to the liver when it's directly connected to the liver. And that's the mistake in the industry right now with science and research, and that's what happens. So mom gets the blame with her breast milk. Is her breast milk the problem when it comes down to acid reflux? Is the breast milk the problem when it comes down to anything else like jaundice or anything like this? And that gets the confusion. Then the baby goes on formula. These are mistakes made in the industry. It's really difficult. I wanna tell you, think about a tractor in a field, in a farm field. So. Someone's trying to start up that tractor. It hasn't started up in a long time. It's got old engine oil in it and it took, takes time to start up. It boots, it spits, it putters, it spouts out smoke. It gets up and running. And what happens with babies' livers is the minute babies are born, the, right when they're coming through, the liver has chemical functions that starts to switch over immediately into starting up that engine, that liver engine. And But if there's old engine oil in a new baby's liver, and that's what it really is, sludge, chemical, uh, chemical poisoning, going all the way back from industries, um, you know, pesticides, herbicides, the heavy metals, all the things that I'm talking about that end up in baby's livers along the way, and generation after generation, it gets worse each generation too. And you wonder why chronic illness keeps on getting worse and worse and worse and children's health is also more difficult than ever before in history right now, just so you know. And think about that tractor trying to run again. Well, that's what happens. A baby's liver is up against a whole bunch of old stuff inside of it, trying to get revved up, trying to get going, trying to get moving. And so at that very beginning, that's when the jaundice can occur. It's from a liver that's struggling with old stuff in it that doctors aren't identifying because it's not the doctor's fault. The doctor doesn't know, the, the doctor doesn't go through training. He or she doesn't go through training about any of this. It's not how it works in the medical industry and I'll tell you why. And I'm gonna go into it right now. Check this out, I'm gonna read this right out of Liver Rescue right here. So just bear with me on this. This is really important. Your son has jaundice too. Yeah, that's the liver. That's, you know that, the doctor knows it's a liver but that's because of different contaminants that sit inside the liver. So check this out. There's a reason that it's completely off the radar of medical research and science that babies are born with compromised livers all the time. If the inherited poisons we receive from our forebears were identified, cataloged, and documented properly all the way down to which chemical factories, how far back in history created each toxic chemical and each toxic solution that's ended up in our everyday environment from pesticides sprayed on our grandparents' lawns to nanotechnology materials sprayed on manufactured items to plastics and even to viruses that have all fed on all of this, every mom on this planet would have a new cause to fight for. Just so you know, moms fight for causes, but this is kept from moms about what sits inside our babies and children's livers and of course carries it on to adulthood. This is kept from our families. This is kept from our mommies. This is kept from all of it because they're not supposed to know. And I'll tell you why, let's keep on reading. Moms would truly make change happen. You know how powerful moms are, right? Mama bears, they make change happen in the world. That's how it works. Moms would truly make change happen. I'm reading right out of Liver Rescue right here, you guys. Knowing that her baby had been hindered in part by what had collected in her liver and her parents' liver and her grandparents' livers and their grandparents' livers without anyone's consent, without mom's consent. Mommies need consent before any harm is done to their baby that could be avoided. They need consent of anything that's not their consent. You have to, it's really serious stuff. This is how it works. Knowing that these industrial mistakes over the decades and over the years were the reality behind the mom's baby's emergency room visits and nights with no sleep, each mom would demand that the rightful sources be held accountable. There would be hell to pay hell to pay. Medical research and science want no part of unleashing this. They don't want to go against the moms. It would be their greatest nightmare because without the gene theory that is basically stuffed down everybody's throat or the body attacking itself theory to lean on, the medical industry would be held accountable to moms and babies for the first time in history. You have to understand something. If moms held the industry accountable, about what's in the baby's livers causing all these problems. If science and research did an analysis 
inside our bloodstream and learned about ins in inside livers and learned about what was in there and cataloged all the different contaminants, the chemicals that go all the way back, identifying them to which chemical factory, to which company, and that was known, there'd be hell to pay like never before in history. Moms would hold science and research accountable for the first time instead of being enslaved by the stuff, the chains that they do by keeping moms in the dark, by keeping moms into the dark on all of this. Very important to understand. All chemicals, all poisons are patented. They all have this, this identification to them. Our baby's livers are filled with all kinds of different contaminants, all kinds of different solutions, all kinds of different solvents, all the different metals going all the way back, and it creates eczema and psoriasis. It creates jaundice. It creates baby liver issues. It creates constipation. It creates stomach pain that you have to run to the emergency room and then the doctors don't know what caused it. It creates all these different problems. It creates pandas because this is viruses included. This is like HHV6 that are in our children. So I want to go into that a little bit. What's pandas? Pan doctors think a pandas is actually just strep. Strep is a cofactor to viruses. Strep does not release a neurotoxin to create neurological problems like ticks and spasms. So they're completely wrong about this. You got your copy coming today? It's coming today? Oh my God, you got your copy today, incredible. So all of this is involved when it comes down to pandas is actually viral. So you got the human herpes viral six. That's behind pandas. You got the shingles, you got the epstein bars. Viruses are behind what doctors think are strep-related pandas. This is really important to understand. It's advanced information because, and I talk about this in Liver Rescue, okay? Viruses release neurotoxins, which creates ticks and spasms and neurological symptoms. That's how it works, not bacteria. Bacteria can create fevers and other things like that, but not the neurological symptoms. It's very important to understand. So PANDAS is actually, is actually a viral situation which sits inside the liver. So our babies and our children do have viral issues inside the liver. So that's how it works. And, and you know, so exposure to mercury at the same time causes this. So a lot of our children, a lot of our babies are exposed to these toxic heavy metals or mercury's passed down from generation to generation. And the, the mercury's passed down, it sits in our baby's liver and it feeds viruses which create pandas. And then, you know, strep is a cofactor to viruses. So strep actually is present. So that's the one thing that doctors are noticing but it's not the answer entirely. There's so much more information to learn. Let's go into other things too. Acid reflux, that's a big one. So what happens with acid reflux, breast milk is made out of basically sugar water, okay? So it's carbohydrates, it's carbohydrate water. That's what breast milk is. And you, you know, the thing is, you're told out there it's all about protein, it's all about fat, it's all about protein, it's all about fat. Breast milk has very little protein, very, very little fat in it. There's a reason for that, because a baby's liver is not supposed to be producing a lot of bile. So if breast milk was high in fat, if babies and children were supposed to have really high fat diets, that wouldn't make sense because the liver is not supposed to, the liver produces very little bile at the very beginning of life. And that, that bile breaks down fat. So that's why breast milk is so low in fat. Breast milk is also very low in protein because HCL is very low in babies, just barely there. So babies have very little HCL. So they're really prone to acid reflux if their liver's compromised. So check this out. If a baby, a healthier baby's liver, a healthier baby's liver was producing the right amount of bile and the right amount of HCL, okay, then yes, probably wouldn't be the acid reflux so much because the liver would be a little bit stronger, would be a little bit better. But what happens is when we come into the world with all of these different um, health conditions with our liver that's unknown to research and science, is completely, totally unaware of what's going on in there, all the contaminants that I read that I talked about that sit inside our baby's livers, it weakens the liver at the start. So the liver's trying to boot up and the doctors be like, oh, the intestinal tract's not developed. The big, your baby's intestinal tract is not there yet. It's not developed yet. That's not how it works. The liver's struggling. So that what happens is it can't produce even the tiniest bit of bile and it can't produce the tiniest bit of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Very little comes is, is being produced. So then the breast milk, whatever fat or protein in the breast milk is in there could affect the baby, but it's not the breast milk. You don't want to stop breastfeeding. That's the confusion because formulas don't work. Other things don't work. So 
you want the breast milk. It's really important. That's, I mean, formulas can work, but the breast milk is the key. The point is when the baby's liver is struggling, so when your baby or your, grand, your, your, your grandbaby or your friend's baby is struggling, the acid reflux, the difficulty with all of that, the spitting up constantly all the time, and, and the doctor's like, well, let's see if it passes or they offer an anti-acid medication and they see, hey, look, it'll probably get better. It, it tends to because the liver tends to finally catch up with itself. It tends to finally get stronger. It tends to finally get in a better place. As it's, de as it's developing, as the chemical process is developing inside the liver, as it's building strength, and then the acid reflux goes down and goes away. But if the liver's struggling all the way, you end up with constipation, other problems, other digestive issues, cramping, gastritis, and all these other things that children go, th children go through. I want to talk about UTI, sinus infection, strep throat, all that is strep, though that's, that's definitely strep. And, and that right there is because the, when the liver's immune system is compromised, children's and baby livers are compromised, their immune system. You'll read in Liver Rescue all about the liver's immune system and how it works. It's a specialized immune system inside our liver that science and research actually is unaware of. And that immune system is designed to keep strep back. So when strep is passed from generation to generation or strep is picked up at a daycare center or however it is or through other means, it, the, bot, the liver strength has to be there, the immune system. So keeping the baby's liver and uh, immune system strong is really important. And we inherited so many things. We inherited so many different viruses and bacteria and all these different contaminants that I was talking about before. It's not mom's fault, it's not dad's fault. This is just the way life works. And we, like I said, reading before, we can't hold those, those chemical companies, um, we can't hold all the industries accountable because science and research won't let us. And it's not the doctor's fault either, and it's not the pediatrician's fault. The best people in the world are the doctors, and they're helping us, working with us every day, and thank God we have them. They save lives, and they even save our children's lives, absolutely. It's just a lot of times they don't have the advanced information with chronic illness. It's a big difference, big difference with that. So I want to go into this one last thing about it. So as the liver gets a little stronger, things get better but that we deal with so much after that. And we have, so, we have adults that are dealing with so many of these different things because the liver got sluggish later or a sluggish before and the acid psoriasis got worse and it just, and it happens in adulthood. All this is stuff is, in, I mean, all this is important in here. I talk about OCD in here a little bit about with this. I talk about, you know, the tics, the twitches, the spasms that kids have with pandas. I talk about all the different symptoms about all the stuff. There's a lot of different viruses that get passed down, passed down from generation to generation. We get exposed to new ones every day. There's the HHV6, there's the HHV7. That's another one too. These sit inside our children's livers and they carry us, we carry them a long way as we're getting older. They cause other situations with their health. We can do something about it. We can take control. Look, you know, one thing about knowing the truth and not being in the dark is it empowers you. It empowers you to protect your children. You know, you've, you've probably read a few of my articles along the way. You've probably heard a few of my radio shows and podcasts. I talk about having the information to become the expert to protect your family. You'll always see in my articles, protect your loved ones, protect your family, protect your children. It's all that matters. Protect your friends. Protect the people that are closest to you so that you can do what you need to do for them and get them better in every way possible. Um, so important. Listen, you guys, if you got a damaged book that came on a conveyor belt that was, that was damaged or you got a damaged book that came in a box, ask you. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a pristine book. So make sure you go to Amazon and you go to Barnes & Nobles or wherever you got the book. You go to the bookstore and ask for a pristine new book because it's your right. The books were all printed in, in pristine condition. And they were shipped out from Amazon, everything else. I don't ship the books out. This is just the, you know, the conveyor belts or however it works. So if you have a damaged book, please ask for a new one, whatever you do. Um, there's supplements in here, dosages and everything to help children and babies. I talk about um, child liver in here, pandas I talk about in here too, acid reflux, all of it. And uh, dosages, go to your pediatrician, bring it to the, your pediatrician, bring your information there. You guys, I'm going to be on Extra Television, so the TV show Extra tonight. Check your local listings. I'm going to be on there. Catch me. Um, you know, it's, it's rare I go on television. It's rare I do TV, but every now and then, 
Exactly. Extra is an amazing show. The people there are incredible. I love them. They actually look out for us. They look out for you. You know, when I talk to them every time, they care about you guys. They care about the people that need the help. They care about the people, and that's who I like to be around, and that's who I like to get help from. I like to get support from um, people in the industry that actually do want you to take care of your children, do want you to take care of your own health, do want you to have the answers, and Extra actually cares so that's why I do the extra, tele, you know, this television show extra because they actually care about you, your health, and there's, you know, and there's there's other shows I won't do because I don't believe that integrity is there at in, in extra. They actually want you guys better so bad, and um, so catch me there, local listings, the whole bit I'll be on tonight there. So um, that's just a little touch about liver rescue for children's health, okay. And in the back here, I talk about strep throat, I talk about strep, I talk about UTIs, I talk about sinus infections, talk about what supplements to do, what dosages, everything else like that. You can talk to your, you know, your best friend, your practitioner, whoever you got, your compassionate healer, and everything else around that. I love you guys. That was a great live here, and I'll see you on the next one, okay? And take care. Hang in there for me. Open the books. Oh, yeah. Read the book from front, from the start. Read it from the start. That's what you have to do. Don't skip around yet. Don't skip around right away. Read it from the start if you can. And uh, I just saw 777. That's pretty cool. All right. I love you guys. It's a powerful number. Bless you.